guys, it's Molly. And we have Kev here. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise Brian. known as God. Hello. And we have Brian. Mm. And Pat. Hey. And this tutorial is about file viewing. Thank you for the intro. That could have been a little more belly girlish. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not a belly girlish. Well, well, could you, could oh, you at least, totally. Totally. Could you at least like say so something naughty? Viewing. As Molly has introduced, we are doing file viewing, and we're also going to be taking a look at a couple commands for searching yeah. files. Ah. Ah. Uh. Which is also kind of like file viewing. Yeah, because we're searching for either a certain character, a certain string, and, you know. And ladies and gentlemen out there listening to this right now, to let them fool you, this is even more dangerous than driving a NASCAR blindfolded. Yeah, so make sure you <laughs> strap on your bicycle helmets before typing in this command. What I want to do is run a list, ls. Here we have test.txt, the file that we created in the last video. I want to run a command now that will let me read the contents of the file. Mm -hmm. it's a simple command. Yeah. It's called more. Mm -hmm. Like I want to see more. M O R E space the file name T tab. Right? Nice. You like that? Tricky. Press enter. Holy goodness. Just prints it right out there. There we go. It just shows it. There's another one exactly like that and it's called less. Type less and then the file name and press enter. It's almost as much as more, but it's less. But it shows it like this. So it kind of shows it in the context of like a text editor kind of thing. Almost like how man, when you type man in the command name and it shows it in like a... And I think you'd really see the difference on very large files. Right. Mm -hmm. So then we'll press Q to come back to the console. Now, what I want to do is I want to find a file that has a good amount of characters because this next command that I'm going to introduce is called head. And what head does is it's a command that echoes the first 10 lines of a specific file. Right, or the header. Right, so why don't we do a list, cd space, hmm, I guess forward slash. Let me do another list, find a file. Hmm, cd, where can, where can we find a text document? Hmm, maybe somewhere in bin there might be some sort of doc. V L S. There's V. Okay, so we have some binary files in here. Maybe I can find a another file. Hmm. What about like a config file, like bash or something? CD like space. I'm gonna go back to the root. CD forward slash ls. I guess we can go into e etc ls. We have a whole bunch of different config files right. in here. What if I did default key map? Okay, so what I did is I, I am reading a file called default tmap.map. And what this does is this echoes out the first 10 lines of the file. Very useful for previewing it. Exactly. So what if I did more, right? And so I can just kind of see how big this file really is. Default key. It's actually a pretty large file. I can uh, scroll up and down here. Well, I should be able to by pressing the enter key. This is a humongous file. <laughs> So a lot of times you don't really need to see all this, you just want to get like a nick to see if it's, you know, is this what you're looking for? Okay, yeah it is, and then you can dive into it. Right, so we can run another command to view a file called tail, and what this is going to do, this is going to read the... Footer. Yes. Or tail under the file. The last ten lines, so I'm going to write tail, space, and then what was it, key, what was the file name? Tail. Let me just run a list. Yo, just do up, up. Oh, you're right. That's the perfect time for that. So I can actually push up, and what it will do is it will go and revisit the commands that I previously typed in, up and down. Mm -hmm. So I could go here and change head to tail. So the tail just printed out the last bit of it, the last ten lines of the file. Cool. Are you happy with that? Ecstatic. Now, have you ever used the cat command? The concatenation command. Yes. Talk to me. I, I've I've never actually used it before, so I don't know if I should man the machine. I was thinking. I'm not. I'm not too sure, but I think concat, cat will. It's usually used for expressions most of the time. Okay. Happy but I, expressions. I, <laughs> but I think you can use it with two files if you want to concatenate two files into one. Okay, so basically I can view two files together. Or actually merge two files together. Try the manual. Try the manual? Yeah, I'm, I'm more used to hearing it in, a, in the context of an expression, like cat and these two strings. All right, I'm gonna type man, C-A-T. This is the command that we're trying to look up, cat. Concatenate files and print on the standard output, which would be the so I monitor. Guess, so I guess what you could do is, if you could print it to the monitor, but you could also print it to a variable if you wanted to. Okay, why don't we do this? I'm gonna quit. And that variable could be another file. CD space forward slash home slash lit ls. We have the test.txt. Right, maybe make a new one. Yeah, let's p right, run pico. Just type pico and then nothing else and press enter. It'll take us right into the text editor. I'm going to type this is file 2. Hold control O. Type. This will be test2.txt. Press enter. Control X will take us back to the prompt. So what we could try to do is concatenate these two files into one file. Right, why don't we give that a try? Let's do cat test 
.txt, and I guess a space, and then test2.txt. And then maybe an arrow arrow in the file name that we want well, to Well, let's, let's just try to run this, see All what right. happens. All right. Press enter. So actually what this does is this takes both files and prints them out. Now what Brian was talking about was piping. So give me a quick, what, what is what is piping? So piping is pretty much when you take the output and instead of directing it to the screen, mm -hmm. as a printout, you direct it to So let's just say for instance we had like, we, we, were, we had like two two text files, we, we wanted to make one giant text file. Pages one through ten in chapter two or something. We can do that, but see for our purposes here where we just have these two little tiny files that we're working with, but you can get the idea. Let's, let's pipe it. So we'll do, I'm gonna push the up arrow, it'll bring me back to the, the the last command that I read, space, and then two arrows like that, right? I think. It may be one, but it could be two. Let's okay. Try two. And then we'll type a file. Yep. So this so will be like total? Total. Type txt. Let's see how that runs. All right, now let's try a list. Total. Okay, I see a total.txt. All right. Let's do more total. Oh, it prints the whole thing out. So right. it, it piped both those files into one. We are the greatest computer science geeks ever. <laughs> Indeed. Clear the screen, gentlemen. Okay, now I'm going to also have you help me out with this next one. What's the next one on plate? Well, there's, there's two that we're going to do, and they're almost the exact same thing, but just we're going to look at the grep. The grep command is a search command. What it does is it searches for a pattern in a specific file, which is different from the next one that we're going to look at after that, which is fgrep, and that searches for a specific string in a file. Right. So let's try to see if we can find an example for grep. All right. Now, should I go back into that um, the config file where we had those those large documents that we could try to search for? Sure, although I think if you don't specify a directory, it might search out the whole hard drive. Or the whole device directories, like all Actually, the, no, all because grep, grep is for a specific file. You do grep and then the file name, right? We'll type man oh, grep. Yeah. You might be right. Yeah. What we do is we're going to type grep, then we're going to type any options that we want to add to grep, followed by the pattern we're searching for and then the name of the file. Done. And we could also do multiple files, as this option indicates here. Hmm. What we would do then is we would type the forward slash f, right? Let me just go down here and just double check as I spit on your computer. Sorry about that. The forward slash f, what is this? Obtain patterns from file, one per line. I guess I'm wrong. I'm not quite exactly sure what that forward slash f is about. So what kind of patterns can we search in this? I don't know. Let's mess with it. Let's do q. I'm going to do an ls here. Let's take us back to the root. cd space forward slash. And then to, uh, you know, mess things up a little bit, do a dir. cd space etc ls. Um, why don't we read that last one that I did? We'll do grep, G-R-E-P, space, and then we'll do default keymap.map. I'm sorry, I have to type in the pattern first. Which is that type? Type the letter A, capital A. All right. Space, default, keymap. All right, now you see what it did here. This is the output, all of this. So what it did is it found lines that had a pattern of A's. So it's not like it found every line that had N A, right? So with this pattern recognition, could you like take all of the ASCII text in a file, convert them all to binary, and then search and then restructure that binary into like hexadecimal form and then search that hexadecimal result for like the pattern of some number it's possible let me let me try to search like for another can you pattern go in all sorts of different directions or does it just search for characters or let's search for five six seven see if that finds anything no i didn't find anything what else should i attempt to search well, for like maybe uh like a quotation something in a quotation quote like, Maybe quote wild card quote. Quote star? Yeah, quote star quote. And that should come up with all double quotes. That okay. sir, that that found lines that a line has. that had composed and then a star in it. Well that sucks. Yeah. Well, it it searches and finds So then a why pattern. is it different than F script? Yeah, F -grip. Well, let's check that. Clear. So do the exact same command. Oops. No. That's okay. So do the last command you just did. I'm going to push up all the way and then change grep to fgrep. Enter. It looks like it performs the same option. Right. So let's type but f. should be, but I just don't know how it's actually looking for patterns. I know it does some. I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Alt. Def default. Key map. So it searches out and destroys everything that has the word alt in it. Are we confusing ourselves here? All right, so if fgrep finds every line that has the word alt, mm -hmm. what if we just did grep and type alt? See if we get the same result. Probably will. Let's test that theory. As you can see, I don't use the grep command very frequently. I. I've, I Honestly, this is like the second time I've ever used it. Enter. Same thing. It appears that we have the exact same output. <laughs> So what is the difference? I don't know. But 
the person who's watching this should figure it out and make a tutorial on it. Absolutely, and submit it to the website. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a look at the difference function. So let's list the files in this directory, and there's test and test2. So in test.txt, there's a line that says this line is the same. And in test2.txt, there's a line that says this line is the same. Okay. So hypothetically, when we compare the difference between test and test2.txt, it shouldn't show that line, this line is the same. Does it? Which it doesn't. It does not. It does not. So these lines are the lines that are different between these two files. Right, so if it finds a line that's the same, it doesn't echo it. Right, and the files are separated by three dash symbols. Excellent. Fantastic. Fantastic. So why, why do I have to man the machine now? Uh, I don't know. It's just... I think it's fine. Maybe. Alright. Now we're going to take a look at a simple command called the file command. File. File. File, file command. So this is going to take us two seconds because the way file works, you run a list. I'm going to type the word file, then type, type the file name, uh, test.txt. And the extension is irrelevant. How do you figure? .txt, .mp, they could all be ASCII English text and it would recognize it. You can't fool it with a dot blah blah blah. Oh, oh, right, right. So, like, if I had um, actually looking at the structure, if I had a binary file and I, and I renamed the .txt, yep, you wouldn't be able to trick it that easily. Right. So, actually, what it's doing is it's just echoing out the name of the file. It's an ASCII English text file. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's see if I can find a binary file. Ls cd space forward slash. Uh, we'll go to cd can space. You use the uh, hand of God to make binary files. Etc. Or? Ls. <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe with some touch a file. file. Why don't we run file mail dot rc? This is a ASCII text file. So rc is basically not, not defined as English. Right. It's it's a configuration right. file. So try uh try mail cap file That's mail cap. I don't know. I can't read that. Mail cap. Yeah. What about? To I fail don't command. Because I think that's uh, a directory. You didn't type in file, right? You typed in fail mail cat. Oh, I'm sorry. Duh. File. File mail cat. It's like a hillbilly slang typing. Mail cat. Oh, ASCII it. text. All right, so that's so ASCII right. text as well. Scanking so if we had like a dot, like a JPEG or um, anything like that, it would just basically tell us what kind right. of file structure it is. Okay, so now there's another command that I want to look at. It's kind of like a search command. I'm going to clear the screen. But what it does is it searches man pages. Mm. And it's called... We run it by doing, uh, actually, let me, let me run the manual for it. I'll do man, it's uh, A-P-R-O-P-O-S, apropos, 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 enter, apropos, apropos, so this searches manual pages for a certain string, I believe, so we will type in the way we use it, right, type the command, and then we should just have to type a keyword. So let's say we want to have anything to do with um, integers. We could look to see if any manual page has anything to do with integers. I N T E G E R S integers. Integers. Nothing appropriate. Dang. What about what about RPM? All right, RPM. There we go. So these are all all of the commands. I was, I mean, or manual topics. Yeah, these are all the manual topics that deal with RPM, which is the installer. The Red Hat Package Manager. Yeah, there we go. Which is a system for installing binary files, which I'm not. Don't even worry about it. We might take a look at it. We might not, depending on how saucy. Yeah, depending how, on how saucy we feel. We might run into that later on. Um, and then there's just let me clear the screen again. There's one more command I want to take a look at here. And what this does, this is actually kind of cool. It's called hex dump. Mm. What hex dump does is exactly that. It just prints the hex hexadecimal equivalent of the file. Yep. So let's go back to the, our home directory, cd space home space linux ls. We have that test.txt that we've been fooling with. Why don't I do that? I'll do... What's it look like in hex? Yeah. Well, we'll do more... So here's what it looks like in ASCII. Just regular text. If I do hex dump, and I do test.txt and press enter. It's gonna crap it out for the six or sixteeners. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, look at that. So we're now at base sixteen, right? Nice. So uh, you could actually, if you wanted to, run a conversion here and convert this all to binary. Yeah. And get the actual binary output. What the files actually, what the data of, of the files actually consist of, consisted of. So this is the hexadecimal representation of what's in the file. 
And those are all the commands that I wanted to go over for file viewing and searching.